These are glory days and not gloomy days. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, let's say it together and we will rejoice mm -hmm, and be glad to be in it. We, hey, we are looking behind the scenes and what is God doing behind the scenes is going to be glorious. These are glory days and not gloomy days. Glory for the righteous. Remember that, saints. Glory for the righteous and gloomy for the wicked. Very, very anointed broadcast. I have my dear friend. We all love him. Bo Pony is with us today. And, you know, we've been traveling. He's been traveling. And so, you know, to get everybody together, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult. But God works it out. And so, saints, I'm going to tell you something. We want to keep you up to date about what the Lord is doing behind the scenes. I'm going to say it again. I want to keep you up to date on what the Lord is doing behind the scenes. So I'm excited. This is a great time to be alive. I've been saying this for the last few years. I'm going to keep saying it. We are the generation that God has chosen to display his glory like you wouldn't believe. And I'm loving this, how the wicked is being exposed and the glory of God is being manifested. And we're going to, and the best is yet to come. So without any further ado, I'm going to bring my dear friend, Bo, come on, welcome, 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 welcome to Behind the Scenes. Hallelujah. How you doing, Brother Bo? <laughs> Great. Thank you, Manny, for having me again on your show. Appreciate it. God bless you. You know, I, I, I love it. Let me tell you something. You are heaven sent. You are heaven sent. I have, you remind me of the tribe. I think you have some Jewish in you. I think you got like the <laughs> tribe, tribe of, uh, uh, what is it called? Issachar. They knew the times and the season, and they knew what they are to do. I have, I'm totally being honest with you. The saints are coming aboard right now. There's a, they're coming by the hundreds because, you, you know, you follow the truth. Saints, we don't follow a lie. Follow the truth. The scripture said is the truth that will make you free. And so we follow the truth. I'm a truth follower. Bo, Bo is a truth follower. I am a truth follower. So, you know, we may not have the details, you know, and like, but we know in part. We know in part. So things may appear to get be delayed, but it's not denied. But we do know every day is getting closer. Every week is getting closer to the things that God's about to do. Right. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And and the truth, Manny, as you've spoken many times, right? What is the truth? It's light. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, it's it's the light, you know, and through our friend, Amanda, uh, Amanda Grace, right? It was a prophetic word. I will shine a giant spotlight to things done in the dark. And, Come you know, on. so shining the light, it's basically exposing the truths. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what are they hiding? What are they hiding? The truth. Right. Come on. So they're keeping it in the dark. And that's why everything that they've been doing for the past year and a half, whatever it's been, right? Or you know, this has been going on for, for ages already, right? But basically the bottom line is they want to hide the truth because the truth will set us free and flip the tables on them. So they can't it, you know, and they're all in it. It's just like this is a global thing. This is Babylon across the world that we're witnessing right this is a global uh, enterprise that's you know that's taken time to manifest and now this is a completely global enterprise from the vatican to washington to germany to china yes. you know it's 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 babylon babylon the great you know, has mm. become a dwelling place for demons. Am I wrong, man? Well, take it from here. You, you, you are right. And, you know, the enemy has turned up his darkness, but God has turned up his glory. Right. God has turned up his glory. You know, and I'm not trying to get you off the subject because you're right there on the subject. You know what happened 24 hours ago? Yeah. Regarding... Yeah. Regarding Donald Trump's home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why would you even do that? You know, 
why would you even raid the man's home? Right. Well, you know, you have to think of what's going on, right? These people oh, yeah. are getting, they're getting boxed into a corner, right? Come on. And no matter what they do, right? This is like crazy because no matter what they do, they can't take down the anointed, right? Like they can't, every, they've tried everything, right? From, you know, uh, impeach, impeach, impeach. And, you know, just, you can just go on and on about what they've tried to do and everything has failed, right? So, so they can't stop because ultimately if they stop, the truth is going to come out, right? And, and what, what is going, what is they, right? They is a sickness, you know? And so the United States is sick, you know, the world is sick. You know, why is it sick? Because it has a virus called evil. And the whole, emp and so this Babylonian system is a very powerful strength right now. And it's an evil, evil system. Um, but, you know, the great part is that there is a God, right? Come on. God, the father, the creator of all things, his son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. You know, what did what was Jesus' last word on the cross? Think about this, right? It is finished. What does that translate to? All debts are paid. Amen. Right? Amen. And so what they've done is they've tried to enslave humanity, but yet Jesus' last words were all debts are paid. Hey. And so when you read Leviticus, right? Thou shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land and to all of its inhabitants. Manuel, you're the greatest when you talk about this, right? You'll have when you were use the word all, right? When you're on stage, right? Because it's not some, right, Manny? It when God right. says all, he means what? What does he mean when he says all, Manny? He means everything, all of right. it. All you of know? it, right? And so I, thou shalt consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land and to all all of it all of its inhabitants okay and so as evil as this thing is you know this this virus that's gone across the world called babylon right it's sick but we're getting sicker because mm. babylon has to get sicker it has to do what it's gotta die come on so the and and this is a prophetic word right the, the united states you know um, I've been on your show before, and how many times have I brought the story of Lazarus up? Come on. Lazarus was sick. He was sick. He was dying. Okay. And when I was on Elijah's stream, the, the, the before I went on, showed me a couple nights before was literally the importance of, um, of Lazarus, the prophecy of or what happened to Lazarus. And since then, this has been a year now, right? How many prophets have brought up the word Lazarus? Mm. Many. Robin Bullock just did recently. Uh, Lois Vogel Sharp did recently. Um, I think um, maybe, I'm not sure if it's Amanda, but I know there's one or two other prophets that brought up Lazarus. The point is, the story of Lazarus is very important. And why is it so important? Because the story basically leads you in know, one direction. Jesus Christ... You know, to Martha, I am the resurrection. What are you nervous about, right? I am the resurrection and the life, right? But Jesus, if you would have been here sooner, my, my brother wouldn't have died. But I am the resurrection. Mm. My point is, right, Jesus took an extra day even to get there. And the whole pro story behind Lazarus is a very powerful story because what are we all waiting for on this world, man? Well, one word, glory. That's the one word we're waiting for, glory. And so what's the story behind Lazarus? Why did Jesus take even an extra day to get there? Four days. So, and this is, this is written, so that they may see the glory of God. Lazarus died. The, and every time you read the story of Lazarus, you can replace it with the United States. And the very simplicity of it is the United States must die so that what? You, we might see the glory of God. God. Because it's coming. And Isaiah 61 is very clear. The year of the Lord's favor. And all we're waiting for is that glory. 
Because when the glory arrives, it's a double-edged sword. It's the day of vengeance of our God. And so we're so close. All the calculations that I've looked at, you know, once June 21 had passed, 40 weeks, we're here. Okay? We're here. So we're just waiting for that final moment, that 24-hour window that was prophesied by several prophets, including Kent Christmas, who stated clearly it will happen in a 24-hour window. You know, when Jesus said, rise, Lazarus, he rose from the dead. How long did that take? Right? That's the point. And when we, when we, when the United States rises again, the great part is worldwide celebrations. So as dark as everything appears right now, because there's so many secrets that are hidden, what's coming is the light. The light is the glory. And when the truth comes out, every, you know, when the glory appears, the truth comes out, a giant spotlight has been shone, shone on all the secrets done in the dark and the de dirty dealings. Everything comes out. And again, like Kent Christmas stated, it will happen in a 24-hour window, and God will not be mocked. Mocked. Woo! Saints, did you get that? Come on. Let's eat it up. Let's eat it up. Let's eat it up. This is that Tuesday manna. Woo! Brother Bo, <laughs> I'm going to give you and the saints what you just said biblical foundations on it please me robin amanda julie and i believe I, I believe i heard you speak it out regarding red sea moments exodus moment okay saints listen closely bo has been speaking all god needs was 24 hours that's his that's his famous one of his famous quotes all God needs is 24 hours. Read now, Isaiah 61, the, the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. Sorry to interrupt, but a day of vengeance is 24 hours. Go ahead, man. Amen. So at the Red Sea, now remember, and we discussed this a little bit on one of the previous live streams I did with Donna. Understand this, that Moses went to Egypt. Okay, the plagues, the 10 plagues, that was not 24 hours. It took a lot of time to get those 10 plagues out there, days and weeks and months. But, and also, Moses warned Pharaoh the day or the hours before the plague would come. The only time the enemy did not know what God was doing was the final blow and that was correct red and i want to stop yeah. you from i'm sorry if i can interrupt because basically i received a prophecy from lois three years ago okay in reference to you know when i was called you know analyst of time the point was it was very clear some things this is what he stated this is god's word some things must remain hidden my son just like the return of my son will be so that the enemy will be caught unprepared Come and on. That's the essence. So at like Manny's saying, everything we know God will do speak through his prophets, but there is one final chess move that's a secret. That's because a secret. That's the strike. Go ahead, Manny. There you go. I call it, Brother Bo Saints, the final blow. The final blow, nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. So so go ahead and use it, Brother Bo. <laughs> it all <laughs> rhymes. <laughs> Love it. Brother Bo, the final blow, nobody know. <laughs> Glory to God. And so anyway, when we're at the Red Sea, Moses didn't even know. Israel didn't know. Pharaoh didn't know. It was within the 24-hour period that God opened up that Red Sea, allowed Israel to cross on their or on dry ground. It was all happened all night. Read the book of Exodus. It happened all night. Sorry, you got two million people with a wealth transfer of gold and silver, cattle, uh, wives, kids. Everybody can't run. Kick having wagons of, of, of material. It takes time. 
So the scripture says it was light for Israel, but it was total darkness for Pharaoh. Pharaoh did not know what was going on. He had no idea God was allowing the Israel to cross over on dry ground with light. They couldn't see it. Since this happened within 24 hours or less, but it was in that 24 hour period. So the scripture says, when that happened, and then now God lifts up, Israel is over, he's there safe. He, you know, he lifts the darkness, enemy sees the Red Sea is open, the pride of Pharaoh, the arrogance of Pharaoh's men was ordered to go into the Red Sea. Now you and I know that if we knew that that, that uh, sea was going to cave in on you, you're not going to go in. So that man had to have a high level of uh, arrogance and pride. And he's, you know, him and his men went into the Red Sea. And we, we, and you know what happened? God closed it up. But God didn't tell Moses until the last minute, until all of Pharaoh's army and probably Pharaoh was in the Red Sea. Moses, God said, now stretch your hands out and do what, you, do what needs to be done. This is going to be our historic moment. This is going to be our historic moment. Never in history. As far as I can recollect, Bo, I don't know if you can recollect, never in history had we've seen what they would call a formal president where they would raid his home when he's not there, right in a year, this year, where God's glory is moving and, and things are about to happen. You know, we could be days, we could be weeks, we could be months away. But things are about to really show up and show out in such a monarch. Uh, and why is it that this is the time when things are getting so close to seeing God's glory move in such a high level of acceleration that they would do this to 45? Who's, hey, if he's, if he's considered the formal president, leave him alone a high threat obviously the enemy knows this man could come back the enemy knows our agenda is not really working the enemy knows something's going on in the spirit realm that you know that that that's about to uh put up pull all of us out of business Bo, Bo, I'm telling you, I'm ready for the trans wealth transfer. Well, you see, Manny, evil's manifesting all over the world now, right? This is this Come is on. you know we, we've spoken in the past, and you know the, where we are. You know, first off, it's imp imperative to understand that we are in end times. Okay, Come on. we're not at the end of the world. Like this is not yeah. the last seven years. Okay, but we are in end times. And, you know, it's written, you know, when the Lamb of Judah opens a first seal, the world will never be the same. Okay, so we're here. The world's never been the same, right? And so we're at this moment in time, you know, where the second seal is open and we're, we're at a third seal event, which what you just stated is the wealth transfer, right? You have, it's a black horse with a rider with scales in his hands, so, Manny, you know, we've talked about that, I believe, in the past. When was the last time in the Bible where a very powerful time point occurred, event occurred, where, the, the, where there was talking about the balances? Remember the writing on the wall? Daniel, mm -hmm. right? Many, many tekel of Shurasim, right? And so you've been weighed in the balances and found wanting. So what is our world? You know, our world is out of balance. We don't know how much money has been created. It's a fiat money system that has been used to enslave humanity. So you've talked about Pharaoh. You've talked about Israel. There is no difference between events of Pharaoh and Israel and the events of the evil ones here on this world, okay, the Babylonians, and and us, you know, the, and, and the people. The only difference is time. It's a few thousand years. Then they were enslaved, just like we are enslaved now. The money system is the enslavement, right? They mm. create fiat money, which are what? Bonds. 
you're bound to the money right so the the it's this is bondage that's been enslaved upon humanity and so they've they're you know what is satan's agenda you have to look at the always step back when you see things going on and, and like don't look at the events but step back and look at the big picture right and the big picture is what satan who all these people work for what does he do he hates god's creation so he wants us out of here he and he's got no home he was kicked out of heaven right so he needs a place to dwell but unfortunately the earth is mine saith the lord mm. and so he ain't getting it period more period. importantly he ain't getting the united states you have to go back and study history. So whatever they've done, whatever they're doing, whatever happened yesterday is a moot point in time because time there is no time with God, right? So whatever they're doing, it's just a moot point because why? The, you have to step back and look at the bigger picture. The United States is found, was founded under God, right? We have a mm. covenant with god who else has a covenant with god israel well guess the the two places that satan's never gonna get he's never gonna get israel and he's never gonna get the united states it's a brother sister Woo! relationship and so because the founding fathers are not here today that doesn't change the fact that they created a covenant the united states was founded under god all men are created what equal equally and so what are they doing, right? Think about what they've done, right? When you create a Babylonian money system, you be, you create trillionaires and people who are broke, okay? So there right there is a perfect example of an inequality. When men, all, How could that be the word equal? Because we're all created equal. So when you have people that are billionaires and people that have nothing or trillionaires, okay, that's a, that's, that's a system of of complete control of humanity and that's what they've done so they've they've detached us from god's money because what is haggai 2 verse 8 state the silver and the gold are mine say at the lord and then what is deuteronomy state we're to be the lenders to the nations and mm. so everything that's going on financially is flipped come on so why do you think jesus christ when he walked in the temple was so pissed because everything that the God, inst God instilled on this earth, they were doing opposite. Come on. The come opposite on. was going on in that temple. And thus Jesus Christ got, you know, flipped the tables because he had enough. And what did he do? <laughs> he whipped the money, money changers, you know. But the money changers are the root of all evil, okay? Because that is your money, the love of it is the root of all evil. And so that's what they've done. You know, they've they've it's it's a love of and the, through the money system they can control humanity. And that's the back going, stepping back, looking the big picture. It's because they want to enslave humanity. They want to control humanity. This has been going on for generations. None of this is new. It's the same. Satan's a copycat. It's the same story a hundred or a thousand years later. Look what happened to Nazi Germany. It's the same, same, same. Same mm. thing, different timeline, same spirits. Wow. You know what? But when you were talking earlier about the, the wealth transfer and the uh, end times, Saints, I'm going to clear, clarify what Bo was saying, okay? On the mountain last weekend, I spent three hours there on the mountain and, the, and talking and praying over many of your, literally we've had thousands of prayer requests. Brother Bo come in within the last past weekend because we're because of just I'm led, but the signal in the mountain was was not that great. The prayer part of it was great. It was when I turned on the live stream, the signals were not that great. But the time before us that several hours it was wonderful. So I had to do a second live stream at the bottom of the mountain where there were signals. The reason why I'm saying this is the Lord spoke to me. I said, Lord, people are saying 
end days or last days or end times. And I asked the Lord and he allowed me to ask him, to ask him that because of the, you know, the thousand years is but a day. We are near that 6,000 years. So we are at the Lord did say, yes, these, he said, yes, my son, these are in times, but he said, but it's not the end of time. Right. Huge difference. Yes. Okay. Saying so it's a huge difference. Because there's still things God has to do. Right. There's still things God must do, and there's things God is going to do. Okay. I I studied the scriptures because not only does God use me to speak a prophecy word, but I'm pastoral. And so I study the scriptures. There is a well transfer when we study the life of Jehoshaphat, King Jehoshaphat. The life of King Hezekiah, the life of Jacob, the life of Joseph, and the also the life of, um, I mean, there's more, but uh, Joshua, and when we study the life of Joshua, how these, these were symbolics of wealth transfers that took place. In the wealth transfer, I had noticed even the book of Exodus, each wealth transfer, it was either before or after, there was a blessing where God also renewed their health. So the wealth transfer is not just about money, it's also health. Do you know good health is wealth? Did you know that? Good well, health. Also, Manny, just to pause on the other, because you brought up the Red Sea, on the other right side of the Red Sea, when you read Exodus, there was no feeble among them. That's right. Psalms one, Psalms one oh five, or either Psalms one oh three. That's exactly the scriptures. And they got so it was a wealth transfer, and then God started healing the saints. That's two million a nation. And so we see that. And when I read the the books, uh, the 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 past, how the Lord, even Himself, you've never heard. When they were with Jesus for three years, what did he say to them? While you were with me, did you lack? What is the Bible? What did they respond? No, Lord, we never lacked. Because the Bible so is always certain, but everything in the Bible is about God is about more than enough, right? So this is like repetitively say everything biblical and godly is more than enough. It's a, it's a kingdom of kingdom economy. Kingdom is a kingdom of more, a godly kingdom is a kingdom of more than enough. A Babylonian system is a system of barely enough, just over broke, you know, just over, just, just barely alive. That's Come on. the Babylonian system. So they're two complete opposites. Go ahead, Manuel. Mm. And wow, I like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm digesting that one out. <laughs> so say that's why you get a job <laughs> just over broke. It's not a joke. <laughs> it's truth. That's the truth. I, I, That's why they pay you just enough so you could survive, but mm -hmm. not enough so that you could have a voice. Come on. So you, bar you barely get by. That's what you know. Right. Yeah. And so God, I love that, Brother Bo, God is more than enough. Yeah. Okay. There, the disciples never lacked. Right. And what even happened with Peter's mother-in-law? She was healed. She had some kind of virus. Jesus took the time to go visit her and heal her. Right. How many times do you read in the scriptures, Brother Bo, where any of the disciples were sick? Right. Correct. Where? Yeah, I know. What happened after the Pentecost movement? What happened? Okay. All of a sudden, you see that finances was coming into the church. The people were being blessed and healings was taking place everywhere. Even to the point where Peter would walk and people would go to his shadow just to make that point of connection. Yeah. So, he, so I'm telling you, so spiritual healing, divine healing and creative healing and financial and not just financial provision. I'm just saying wealth uh, provision. Is their their sister and brother? They work hand in hand. 
Well, look, if I can chime in here, because I want let's let's get into scripture too to understand why. Okay, so like you're just saying, they, okay. they they work hand in hand, right? How did they build Babylon that exists today? With what, Manny? With what? They detached it from God's money, so they built it on a fiat money system. The money is now Babylon. The Bab the money has allowed Babylon to what? Grow and prosper. Mm. Mm. The money, it's all, why did Jesus, why was he so pissed in the temple? Because of the who changers, the money changers. He knew the money was always the root of all evil. It's really important to understand this. So now let's go back to, to what we talked about in Daniel. Many, many tackle off, Sharsim. You've been weighed in the balances and found wanting. What's the next on. one? Your kingdom has come to an end. Mm. Proverbs 13, 22, the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. When will that happen? In Leviticus, in the 50-year jubilee, thou shalt consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land and to all of its inhabitants. The point being is many, many tekel offshore seem your kingdoms come to an end. Your kingdoms, their kingdom, their Babylonian kingdom, their Babylonian system has come to an end. And where do we see that in Revelation? Let's read Revelation 18. Go ahead. I'm going to go through a few verses here because this is what's going on right now. She has become a Babylon, meaning she has become a dwelling place for demons. And the merchants of the earth have grown rich from her power of her luxurious living. That's what's going on. Now let's continue. Her, the harlot, plagues will come in a single day. The kings of the earth will weep and wail over when, over her when they see the smoke of her burning. For in a single hour her judgment has come. For in a single hour all of this wealth has been laid waste. That was Revelation 18, 10 through, uh, 8 through 10 and 17. The next is rejoice, O heaven, and you saints and apostles and prophets, for God has given judgment for you against her. That's Babylon. That's the harlot. Then it, then a mighty angel took up a stone, like a great millstone, and threw it into the sea, saying, So will Babylon, the great city, be thrown down with violence, and all nations will receive, will, all nations were deceived by her sorcery. So this is what it, so this is the harlot, it's its sorcery, it's deception, this is what's been going on. And so we're waiting for the great wealth transfer. Well, where does that happen? It happens on the fall of the harlot. It happens Daniel mm. 2.34. And you look, the stone was cut off by no human hand, and it struck the image at its feet of iron and clay and broke it to pieces. And that was a fall of Babylon. Mm. Gold and silver, mark my words, are never going to be worth anything in a Babylonian system. We are to be the Deuteronomy states. We're to be the lenders to the nations. That's an impossibility in a Babylonian system. But you've stated, and you know prophetically, right, that we're going to see an overturning of the money tables very soon. You have stated, Manuel, that we're going to see a wealth transfer. Yes. In order for the wealth transfer to occur, Babylon, Babylon, the great will fall. That is the only time because they control everything. And when God intervenes in that 24-hour window, they that control the world think that they are that they are unbreakable, unstoppable. They're going to come to realize that there is a God and nothing can stop what God's will is. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So they cannot stop what's coming. Regardless of whatever they do, they're not getting in the United States. And Babylon the Great is about to fall. We are in the 50-year Jubilee. We are days away now from the Jubilee year ending, which is the 24th of September. So I don't know the day. I don't know the hour. All the prophets have spoken that something 
awesome is about to happen. The glory is about to appear. So we don't know how this is going to play out particularly because it's all a secret. But like you stated, Manny, you know, we don't know the exact time point this is going to go down. But God has spoken through you and through the other prophets that we are going to have an incredible, incredible year. Go ahead, Manuel. Wow. You see, saints, God didn't tell Moses until the last second when to close the Red Sea up on the enemy. Even Moses didn't know. Okay. The final blow, we don't know. But God knows because he's the Lord is going to deceive the deceiver. I like it how, how, how Bo has emphasized much on the United States and Israel. And when I was on a live stream with Julie a few weeks back, we went into the details of that. And so it was extremely important that you understand there is a covenant between the two nations with God. Okay. God has a covenant with Israel. The nation of Israel is not going anywhere. God has a covenant with the nation of the United States of America. The Lord showed me this over years. And he said, this was a greater thing than the constitution. He says, my covenant with your nation. Well, when he spoke that to me, I wasn't in Israel. I was in the United States and I'm, and I, I was born, I was born and raised in the United States. My parents were too. My ancestors were too. So the Lord made it very clear that there is a covenant and that's a game changer. And what Bo said is so true. This is this nation is not going to they the enemy may think it's going the enemy may think they're getting this or they're getting that. But at the end of the day, God is going to slip the rug from up on them. So that's why we stand where we stand. I may not know the details, but I know who knows the details and his word is not going to come back void. We are going to celebrate. There will be celebration in the streets. There'll be celebrations in the homes. There's going to be celebrations in the schools. There are going to be celebrations in your cars. There will be celebrations at work. There's going to be glory celebrations. The scripture says, you know, that the latter glory will be greater than the former. Woo! Where is that? Where is that written, Manny? Where is that written? Wow. Where, where is know, that written in the Bible? Haggai 2. Haggai. Haggai. Thank you. That is Haggai. where it's. And the reason I wanted, I love that you brought that up because mm. I want to bring up Haggai and Go how ahead. important Haggai was, right? And so, well, this is actually incredibly awesome to understand, you know, timing. So let, I want to talk about the number 24, the number 24. From a biblical, biblical perspective, okay, there's 4,000 years of the Jews, 2,000 years of the Gentiles, Gentiles, that's 42, and then a thousand year millennial reign. Okay, so that's 7,000 years, all because of Adam and Eve and, and evil getting on the earth. So we're, like you said, we're in the, we're in the latter part of the 2000 years, the four, the 4,000 is over. That was the time of the Jews. Now in the latter, we're in the latter part of the, of the 2000 years. Okay. So that's, and you do that other way around, it's two and a four. So it's 24. So let's talk about the number 24 and how crazy these things have transpired. So on August 24th, last year, the last year, August, Saudi Arabia and Russia signed a military contract, but U.S. already had one, okay? On, on October 24th, Evergrande failed to make a $83 billion payment. Mm. So Evergrande is going to tie in with the financial collapse that we're about to see. On February 24th, war breaks out Russia and Ukraine. On March 24th, Putin demands payment for gas and oil for the, for gas and oil in the rubles. On April 24th, Ukraine apparently strikes two huge oil refineries in Russia. And now let's get to Haggai. On June 24th, Roe v. Wade was overturned. My point is, 24 just seems to be an interesting number. Then when you read 
Haggai, since you brought that up, right, the latter rain will be greater than the former rain. This friend of, a friend of mine, Lois Vogel Sharp, actually got prophetically a few days before that God was going to overturn Roe v. Wade on the 24th of June. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. And when she got that prophecy, God specifically gave her Haggai 1, verses 13 through 15. And this is what it reads. It's really amazing. And then Haggai, the messenger of the Lord, spoke to the people with the Lord's message. I am with you, declares the Lord. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of the remnant of the people, and they came and they worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of Darius the king. June 24th, the second year of the decade, is 20. 22. Mm. The amazing part of that prophecy is he gave her two pieces to the to that prophecy. He goes, not only is I'm not sure specific words, but not only was that prophetically important that date, he also on that same prophetic word gave Lois the date, or actually gave her the prophetic word of Haggai 2 verses 18 through 19. Manuel, you're going to love this part. On the 24th, oh, 24 again. What a coincidence, right? On the 24th day of the ninth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came by the Haggai, the prophet. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider from this day onward, from the 24th day of the ninth month. Let's, let's read this slowly so everybody can absorb the juice of this. The vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate tree, and the olive tree have yielded nothing. Mm. But from this day forward, I will bless you. Woo! What are we waiting for? We're waiting for the glory, the blessings. Do you realize that that prophetic word of Haggai 2 just happens to be the last day of the 50th year because the next day september 25 is rosh hashanah the 51st year so the next year god's year begins so that would be like january 1. all i'm telling you is that we are so close to something glorious going down on this earth it's not worth wasting our time watching events that are going on in the media around because it's nothing but a show. And the show you should be preparing for and waiting for and praying for is God's show. Because he's going to show up, show off, and show the world yeah, yeah, yeah. who's in charge. Everything else is just noise. Wow. Saints, I'm going to tell you something. We know what year it is. See what Bo just said? get ready it's 2022 two years ago i had a time travel and in that time travel i asked two questions i didn't see it i asked i said what year is this the gentleman said 2022 so i know i was in a different time then I asked a second question. I said, who was the president? Now, I didn't know what month or week it was. He said it was the year 2022. And when I asked him, I asked him. I didn't see anything. I asked. He said it was Donald Trump. That was a time travel. A place that God took me. So this is why you're seeing the, what you've been hearing in the media night. Pray for his family. Pray for him. Pray. Because this is all connecting. Because Trump is one of God's vessels. You are also God's vessels. I am God's vessel. Bo is God's vessel. We are his mouthpiece. And the enemy doesn't like it. Pray for God's voices, God's prophets. Pray. Pray for God's servants. 
It's very important because the Bible says in the book of Daniel that the enemy wants to change times and seasons. Read the book of Daniel. What is your part is to pray this thing through. Pray this thing through. Pray and return to the Lord. Yes. Return that, you know to what, the Lord. Well, that is so that's that they, thank you. I that, want that, to and I want to over because because everything you're saying, man, you don't realize, but it's scriptural and timed perfectly, right? Mm. So when you finish with Haggai, the next thing that starts biblically is Zechariah. So let's go through the next couple of verses here because this because this is like we're watching all this unfold right now right and when you read a zachariah 1 verses of uh, zachariah 1 verses 1 through 4 a call to return to the lord that's what you were just saying return to the lord right in the eighth month of the second year of darius august in the eighth month we're here Return to me and I will return to you. So what, is, what does Zechariah 1 say? In the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came by the prophet Zechariah saying, The Lord was very angry with your fathers. Therefore say to them, Thus declares the Lord of hosts, Return to me and I will return to you. Do not be like your fathers, to whom the prophets cried out, Return from your wicked ways. The fathers are the ones that enacted Roe v. Wade. This is what the prophets have been screaming. Do not be like your father. We've turned from our wicked ways now. God is now with us. If God is with us, who could be against us? God states in Zechariah, return to me and I will return to you. If God returns to us, he's with us. Do you realize when Israel went to war, they didn't lose one battle when God was with them? And mm. we're about to witness the power of God. This is going to be an incredible year. Your words were prophesied through the prophet Kim Clement. You know, mm. so things that you've been stating have been prophesied already through Kim Clement eight years ago. So he I, too, so I, he, heard, I heard. Yeah, he too has stated uh, directly what you know what you've been talking about. You know, and and what's what's happening. So the point is, you know, when you overlay the words of the prophets and they fit like a glove, the same message, then overlay it with scripture. We're here. We're here. Okay. And Kim Clement prophesied that summer will be the mediator so that the fall can do its work in America. They fall in fall. What happens, okay, September 24th is the fall. It's September, the fall time starts September 21. So September 21 is the last day of summer or the first day of fall right there. And then the fall begins so that the fall can do its work in America. And what did Haggai 2 state? From this day forward, I will bless you blessings for a defiled nation we are a defiled nation why we were the we killed god's creation that's what's been going on here for, for 50 years but now we've overturned it it was always about roe v wade because mm. roe v wade was in the simplest form the Come destruction on. of the creator's creation the creator created us out of love and we turned our back and decided to kill the creator's creation. And that was the epitome of the worst thing we could have done. And for that reason alone, God had his back to us for 50 years and thus we got what we got mm. because of what we did. But now through Haggai, we have returned from our wicked ways. And we've now overturned Roe v. Wade. And from this day, you know, what is it? The first was June 24th and September 24th from this day forward. Mark my words. I'm just telling you because that was spoken 
to a profit, profitess in this case. Wow. From this day forward, I will bless you. And that correlates perfectly with the word of Kim Clement, who clearly stated, so that the fall can do its work in America. And that correlates directly with the fall of Babylon. Babylon, Babylon, the great has fallen, Revelation 17 through 18. And that fall of Babylon is nothing more than what's stated by Daniel 2, the fall of the statue. And that will be what you have stated, Manuel, the greatest wealth transfer in human history. History. We are going to see one of the greatest move of God's spirit ever in the history of this world. Julie Green has stated this is this will not be the great, this will not be the exodus, this will be the great exodus. Why? Because it'll be one of the greatest move of God's spirits ever in the history of this world. We've never seen anything like this, and we get to sit here and watch the hand of God destroy these people, watch them flee. Because ultimately, the United States, as much as they want it, they never getting it. It's, it is a covenant nation with God, just like the United States. And prophetically, the United States will be a beacon of light for all the world during these end times. And that's, that's right. how this will play out. Not my word. Those were the words of God. Saints, do not think because you hear the things that are happening in the media regarding Donald Trump, that Trump's a bad person. Okay. The Lord makes it very clear. You and I, we will go through trials, both, all of us. Okay. Remember what happened to Joseph. Imagine being rejected by your brothers, thrown in a pit, being slow, sold as a slave. Was God with Joseph? Yes. Remember Joseph being accused of rape and he did not rape. He was thrown in prison. Was God with him? Yes. You're seeing this. A lot of saints have been going through some but serious. Finish attacks. the story of Joseph. Finish the story. Because what okay. happened to him in a 24 hour window, man? Yes. Oh, yes. From uh, now. He, didn't, he hit, didn't even know it. From the All pits sudden, he's called to, to the palace in 24 that's right. hours. From, I love it. From the prison to the palace. Yep. All next thing you know, he's told to shave, clean himself up, put on his, his best prison clothes and go before Pharaoh. And next thing you know, you know, first he was standing before Pharaoh. Now he's sitting next to Pharaoh. He was the God. he was the second only one he was the second most powerful man in the world within a 24 hour window. Thank you. Many times its scriptures have shown it. When the persecution rise, it's usually because something's about to happen. Was 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 God with Jesus when he when Jesus was a little baby? With 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 Mary and Joseph and the and and um the the wise man went to go to Harold's palace to look for Jesus. What did Harold do? You know, within a 24-hour period, you know, sent out the arm the his military to go and slaughter the babies that was uh two years old and under. Was Jesus was God with Jesus? Yes. But those babies are in heaven. God doesn't lose those babies. But God does deal with the person that executed and took life. But I'll tell you this much. The reason why you see this is because the Lord, it's about to do something historic. Historic. Israel is not going anywhere. The United States is not going anywhere. And you and I that are standing in the Lord, we're not going anywhere. You will see the plans of the enemies fall, fall, fall. Crumble. Crumble. Oh, crumble. okay. Bo both said not just fall, but also crumble. Okay, I was seeing that. And, when, and in, in the fall, right? What comes in the fall, Manuel? What happens in November in the fall? Thanksgiving. That's right. Right. How many prophets... Okay, what did you say, Manuel, last year about November? Oh, yes. Christmas yes. in November. In November. Manny, now, would you like ah! to 
Would you like a scripture for your prophecy? Give it to him. Give it to him. Bob. Here's a, here's what I got this week. So here's a scripture for Manuel's prophecy of Christmas in November. Zechariah 1, 7 through 17. And on the 24th day of the 11th month of the second year of Darius. Do you realize that the 24th day is Thanksgiving of November? The mm. 11th month? Wow. Wow. I know the saints got that. I know the saints got that. Zechariah 1 actually references this Thanksgiving. And what happens on Thanksgiving, Manuel? What you have sown, thus shall you reap. You sown evil, what do your hats say? You get evil. You sow mm. glory. Actually, your hats say you sow glory, you get glory. That's Let's continue. Right. Therefore, I and what does Zechariah 1 7 through 17 state? The last line here it says, Therefore, I, meaning God, have returned to Jerusalem with mercy. My cities shall again overflow with prosperity, and the Lord will again comfort Zion. Welcome to Thanksgiving. Saints, as, I, as I'm here in, in my studio, and Bo is in his studio, I don't know how he does it because Bo travels a lot. I don't know how he, how he does the background. That, I think that's awesome. Uh, I just wanted to throw that one in. Saints, you all see this young man celebrate me and my wonderful wife. We're going to celebrate. I'm going to celebrate. I'm serious. We're going to have our glory day hat on, you know, and the, the days of celebrations are upon us, you know, and, I, and I, I, I might just call Donna and Robin and Hank and Steve and, and I'm Bo. I said, Bo, get your, get your glory day hat on. <laughs> We're going to celebrate. Julie, Julie, get your glory out. We're going to celebrate. I'm telling you. When the glory shows up, celebrations arrive. Period. Go continue, Manny. Come on. It is going, listen, anytime there's a move where the enemy falls and, and, uh, and the righteous rise, there's a celebration. Right after, right after the Red Sea, they celebrated when they saw the enemy's plans came to nothing. It's not that the enemy didn't try anything. It's just that it didn't end the way the enemy wanted it to end. It ended the way God wanted it to end. Right. It's not the enemy's timeline. It's just going to end the way God wants. Oh, I feel that such an anointing. This is the way it's going to end the way God wants it to end. Okay, saints? It's not going to end the way the enemy. That's why when I was on the mountain, God showed me two calendars. Satan's calendar and God's calendar. And God's calendar prevailed over our nation, over the nations in the world. It prevailed. That's why I'm excited about this. You know, and, and you know, Bo, I'm going to do another live stream later on this week. Because we're going to be, God has got me in such a high anointing on praying for the saints' needs you know the 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 darkness that that we will have to uh not i'm gonna i'm not gonna use the word go through because the, the darkness will come but we will be protected and it's going to be quick it's not going to be like weeks on weeks on and no nothing like that we are going to be taken care of and the Lord has had me on a prayer mandate to pray for, I'm seriously, to pray for coverings over people that all will be well. Well, in the time of Pharaoh, right? And what happened when the angel of death showed up, mm -hmm. the angel of death didn't touch. Come on. The blood. So wherever there was the blood, there it was angel of death did not touch. Kent Christmas had prophesied. Actually, well, let's. 
let's get to that because you know since you since you're bringing that up you know the death angel because the death angel is coming this year okay the death angel is showing up this year and it's going to be for them it's not going to be for the bride and that was spoken directly through Kent Christmas of this year. I'm trying to find the prophetic word here. Let me find it if I can pull it up here. But I just found it truly powerful when he stated that. Um, I can't find it right now. But it's just, oh, here it is right here. This is th These are his words, okay, prophetically. And this is not Kent Christmas speaking. This is Kent Christmas on fire, okay? When you see him like just like going, that's the Holy Spirit just ripping through him okay and he's speaking crystal clear through god right so this is this is what he stated right here um i declared and to say to you the lord this is not a weeping hour but i stand today upon the edge of nothingness nothingness and say let there be light hear me say it the lord before this year is out the death angel is being loosed upon the earth and what they concocted created in the laboratories called corona will pale in comparison, saith the Lord, to the spirit that the death angel will loose upon the nations, and I, when it will not touch my people, will not touch the church. Some will fall at your right hand, I declare the Lord, as I declared in Psalm 91, and they will fall at your left hand. But I, but it shall not come unto thy dwelling. So there is confirmation well, to what you received, you Manuel. So there you go. This, you know, the death angel is coming this year, and it is going to be for them, just like in the time of Pharaoh. It didn't touch Israel. Gloom, gloomy for the wicked saints, right. glory for the righteous. The hats that God gave me, I've said it, and I'm saying it, I'm not in the clothing business, okay? I'm not in the hat business. This was divinely given to me for such a time as this. Well, I just like, I, I like, I like what it states, Manuel, you know, the glory days, not gloomy days, right? Because yeah. these, these are glory days, but we're, we specifically, we're waiting for the glory. Okay. When the Amen. glory arrives, we're going to have glory days. Okay. Right now it might look gloomy because remember the tables haven't flipped yet. And that's the essence of, of what's coming. You know, a prophet lives in the future because he sees the future. He's seen the future, sees the future. And so he's, he's, you know, the hats are simply telling you a prophetic word of what is to come. That's right. And this is the reason why we've been speaking it on every live stream, Elijah stream, uh, uh, live streams, uh, every live stream. These are glory days and not gloomy days. Glo uh, and, I, and I encourage you, whether you have a hat or not, I encourage you, speak it over yourself. Speak it over yourself. Think these are glory days, glory weeks, glory months, glory years for me. Speak it over let's yourself. Talk, let's talk glory November. I, I want to talk about November because we read Zechariah and Manuel had a prophetic word, Christmas in November. Now we've read Zechariah. I want to read the next few lines of Zechariah. Because I think this will rhyme. Well, Take this it away, will, Take this it will, away. This will work with you, Manuel, because of your prophetic word you got last year. Okay. And when, when we saw each other last time, I, I said, you know, as many things happened last November, you know, we're looking for literally something huge to go down. And what better time than this November? It, well, well, we're going to wait to see what happens here on September 24th, because that's going to supposed to be from this day forward, I will bless you. So I'm telling you, that's going to be awesome just because it was already spoken through a prophet, prophetess. And so now mm -hmm. the only thing that, you know, that all I know is that Kim Clement said what about November? Hypnotic November. Manuel Johnson stated Christmas in November. Zechariah, we just read on the 24th day of the 11th month of the second year of Darius, which is, happens to be November 24th, which happens to be Thanksgiving. And what happens on Thanksgiving? The seeds that you have sown, you reap. It's harvest time. Mm. So let's read the last part of Zechariah, which I find fascinating. I don't know if there's any of this is going to come to pass, but I feel in my heart it's powerful. So let's just go with this for a minute and see where you what, what you feel, Manuel. So Zechariah 1, verses 18 through 21. A vision of horns and craftsmen. And I lifted my eyes and I saw and beheld 
four horns. Now, if you study the horns in the Bible, the horns are kings. Okay. So I looked and I saw, behold, four kings. And I said to the angel who talked with me, what are these? And he said to me, these are the horns, meaning the kings, that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Mm. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen. And the craftsmen, if you study the Bible, they're, like, they're men of God. They're doing God's work, like a, tr like a trump like a trumpet okay so i then i looked and i and i saw four craftsmen and i said what are these coming to do and he, he said me and god said these have come to terrify them meaning the, the kings the horns to cast down the horns the kings of the nations who have scattered the land of judah Woo! What have they done? The Babylonian system. She's about to come down. They're coming. The kings, the craftsmen are coming to take down the kings. The craftsmen are the men that work for God. It's coming. Saints, I'm going to tell you something. Christmas in November. Christmas in November. I'm about God's business. I really am. All lives matter. From the womb to the tomb. Speaking over your prayer requests that you've sent in. And they still keep coming in. Glory days, not gloomy days over your prayer requests. Glory days, not gloomy days over your life, saints. Glory days, not gloomy days over your loved ones. I believe God. No one can change me on that. I've seen what God's done in my friends' lives. I've seen what God's doing in Bo's life. Julie's lives, and I've seen it. I'm not talking about the the live stream platform. I'm talking about their personal lives. How I know God is with them, and God is using them, and, and we're we're all one minded because we know what the Lord's about to do, and so we're going to spread that light. We're going to speak that light into your lives. We're going to continue. I'm a person. I stay in the race. I stay in the fight. And the last week and a half, Brother Bo, I've been saying this on the live streams. Stop listening to that malice that's out there that's trying to come against God's prophets. Don't be a part of that. We can, we can love the person. We can forgive the person. But it doesn't mean whatever the things that they're saying is from God when you're speaking against a man or a woman of God. The scriptures tell us in Proverbs 6 that it's the abomination when a person spreads discords, discords among the brethren. That is an abomination in the eyes of God. We have to forgive. We have to forgive them. And obviously the enemy is trying to bring division. And we have to be above the enemy several steps ahead of him that's why we have these live streams there's not one man or woman is perfect we all make our mistakes we are, that that's going to happen i'm not trying to be a perfect vessel all i want to be is a willing vessel and that's what brother bo is that's what julie is steve and amanda we're just willing vessels we're not trying to be perfect but we're willing vessels and saints, when we minister or we prophesy, we give a word of knowledge. It's not always about what we're saying. It's the interpretation of it. Because you can get the wrong interpretation and miss God. So we always take prayer, prayer, prophecy, word of knowledge, whatever it is. Take it into prayer all the time. So we can get a better interpretation. So we won't, po so we won't point fingers. Because we know in part. We prophesy in part. We see visions in part. We see dreams in part. But at the end, at the end of the day, God un unwinds everything. Says, oh, now I understand what God showed me. Now I understand what God took me to. But I thank God that you and I, I thank God for Brother Bo, Julie, uh, for Donna, Amanda, Cad Kurt, Robin, I thank God for all of them. 
whether I call the name or not, I thank God for all of them. Because these, these are the voices that God has used, and many more, known and unknown, to speak life into you, saints. Because we know, I, I know I know, especially all the hundreds of prayer requests that I would, all those that I was reading, I know the attacks many of you saints have been going through. So it's a mandate for me. You'll see that in the next few days in my live stream, but we're going to be dealing with this. It's a mandate for me to pray for the saints because you need to get through this just as much as we will get through this. Amen. Brother Bo, I know you're about to catch a flight. I want to thank you so much. You got any last words for us, Brother Bo? Oh, first of all, how can they connect with you, Brother Bo? Um, well, I'll be in, first off, I'm there. I'll be in uh, New York. I think it's Rochester, mm -hmm. just out of Rochester this weekend. So I'll be there. But anybody in the East Coast, come out to see Clay Clark out there. And that'll be a fantastic event. And aside from that, uh, website gold2020forecast.com or YouTube. Just put my name in or do it on Rumble as well, too. So that's how you Is find that it. Is that it? Yep. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> I love it. Yep. <laughs> All right. People have been asking about how can they invest in gold? Um, you know, very simple. Go to my website, gold2020forecast.com. Again, Manuel, what's coming is one of the greatest. I don't sell gold, okay? I do a time analysis on it. Um, the whole point is, you know, blessings are coming. Well, Manuel, what does it say in the Bible about blessings? 30, 60, or 100 fold, right? So mm. if God's going to bless, again, this is not about this, you know, the silver and the gold are mine, saith the Lord. So God's going to bring financial blessings. Those who prepared financially will be blessed. Yes, other people who didn't prepare will also be blessed too because, well, you know, it's uh, Leviticus, you know, all, you know, we stated the word all before. But the point is, there's still the possibility of preparing financially by purchasing, by basically getting rid of paper that we know has been created by evil, to control and enslave humanity, as we discussed on this live stream. So if you want to hold that paper, that's your prerogative. Personally, my, Manuel, myself, I know we believe the silver and the gold are mine, saith the Lord. Correct me yes. if I'm wrong, but that be the case. If, the, if, if God's going to do a wealth transfer, well, he's not going to transfer it into some different paper. No, no, he's going to transfer it into his money. So that when the financial blessings can occur and occur, we can take the blessings and do what with it? Bless, bless and prosper and build his church. Come on. That's the essence of it. So, you know, the evils always try to keep finances away from the church and from God's people so that they couldn't prosper. And so we're stepping into the greatest wealth transfer in human history. If you want to be a part of it, hey, maybe you might want to buy some gold and silver. Just a thought. If you want to get it on my website, I don't sell it. But there are several links of people in different parts of the world, in Europe and things. And also here in the United States, there's a few different links. You can click on them. And there's some avenues for you to buy precious metals from reputable dealers who I personally know and believe will deliver and give you a good product so that's just you know one source of where you can go to find of where i can you know if i want to buy precious metals well that's where you can get some reputable dealers that you know that i personally have used and i know i've come through every single time so so there you go except for the people out of the country i haven't used them but i've heard good talks about them or good reputations so that's the deal about precious metals if a wealth transfer is coming if you want to be involved hey it's a per everything in life choosing good and evil preparing it's all free will it's all a choice love it oh it was good saints you know how to go go to our website or you can go to our youtube page mega praise ministries youtube page and subscribe you go to this uh to both youtube page and subscribe uh this week this sunday we're having a powerful powerful anointed healing service uh anointed service I'm going to probably bring the oil that hasn't used up. We still got that oil, uh, Brother Bo. It's not used up. <laughs> and we're having our Torrance service this Sunday, 6 p.m., August 14th, in Torrance, California, 2300 Sopo the Boulevard, Torrance, California, 6 p.m. I'm telling you, saints, it's going to be, we always have a wonderful time, and we thank God for what he's doing. 
I mean, he's just, just having a great time. Brother Bo, you're going to have a great time, anointed time in New York, the Clay Clock event. Woo! And we're going to kidnap you again when you, can, when you get back to California. <laughs> I love it. Brother Bo, uh, tell First Lady we said hello. And yeah. the Saints were really blessed. They were really blessed to have you on today. And we just love it all the time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Bottom our heart, for coming on and being a blessing to all of us and being part of the kingdom of God. You too, man. God bless you, Manny, your wife, and all of your viewers. Thank you for having me here again. Absolute pleasure. And I just know we're so close. And bottom line is, God, the most important thing I can message I can pass on is God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit are in complete control. So stop Love wasting it. your time watching the news and be in the right place with God. Wow. There it is, Saints. You've heard it. Saints, let's keep it in. Uh, we've gotten hundreds and hundreds of people off the streets in LA, especially LA. Wow. And we're gonna, we're we're getting we're gonna, we you know we're now we want to go into the you know thousands. So continue to support the work of the Lord, continue to help us get the gospel out, get the homeless off the street, into housings, into food, clothing, and the gospel. Continue to partner with us, make a praise minute. Thank you so much for what you do. Remember, we'll see you in a few days. Remember, the good news is that the bad news didn't work out. Love you Amen. guys so much. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.